Hey everybody, Jeremy Trollard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short customizing tutorial videos. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a painting tutorial specifically on how I paint skulls or at least one of the ways that I paint skulls. Um, I'm going to take you kind of step by step through the process that I use to paint some projects recently um, just as one example of how you can paint skeleton parts. Um, now it does bear mentioning that when you're trying to paint skeleton parts for Mythic Legions, the method you use is really going to depend on what body you're trying to match. You may not be trying to match a body at all, but if you are, that's going to matter. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got two different skeleton figures here, and these are not customized. These are just right out of the box. I've got Malleus and I've got Tibius, okay? These are both from the original Kickstarter series. Um, Malleus has been reissued as part of All-Stars 3. Tibius is being reissued as part of All-Stars 4. So these are two figures that are gonna be somewhat readily available that you might use as a base body to match skeleton parts to. If you look at their skin tones there, I should say their bone tones there, um, they are very, very different. Tibius has very, very light bones, whereas Malleus has much dirtier, dirtier bones. So the method that I'm gonna to show today is more about matching Malleus. This is a figure that I've done a number of different paint matches for recently, and that's the process I'm gonna show you. Um, one of the nice things about this is it's a really dirty figure, like, just out of the gate, it's kind of, it's got a lot of colors going on, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It's not like if you're trying to match, say, armor, right? If you're trying to match, like, a knight's crystal, you know, like, clear armor, it's got to look really, really close because it's, like, one color. It, these bones are much different. There's a lot going on. Even if you just open up a bunch of different Malleus figures, you're going to see some variations in the way the colors and the washes and everything are done. So you've got a little bit of degree of kind of being able to, to mess around with it there and it still look great. Cool. So the the figure in question that I'm going to show you how I painted is uh, a part that was recently offered through legionshop.com. And it's still available on Legion Shop. You can go get this from there. And it's this cool demon ogre skull. So this is a piece that I helped design. I worked with uh, Tristan from Immortal Collections to do the sculptures. Uh, they were printed by Noble Bear Customs. And once again, they're sold by Legion Shop. So they're sold both painted and unpainted. If you buy them painted, they come like what is in my hand here. If you buy them unpainted, it's all up to you. I'm going to show you how I paint these specific heads. And it's a multi-step process, okay? So when you get it in unpainted, the first thing, I'm going to share something here. It's going to look something like this. It's going to just be an unpainted part. It's just gray resin. So the first step that I do for any unpainted resin parts is I base them out with some spray paint. Um, I posted a video recently all about this exact topic about the spray paint that I use, the Krylon bat Black. I would use that to get a nice solid base coat all over this piece. Ironically, that's the only part of the process I didn't remember to take a picture of, so I don't have a picture of it fully black, but I think that you can imagine what that would look like. Um, all I'm doing is spraying it all black, turning it over. It usually takes a couple coats because it is a large piece. What ends up happening is when you spray it, you know, you put it down, you spray all of this, but you're not going to get underneath it. So then you got to flip it over. Um, it's got a lot of crevices in the eyes and everything. So you got to concentrate to make sure you get all of those. But once it's fully spray painted black, step number two comes in. That's going to be my first coat of paint. And the one that I like to use, again, I use a lot of Vallejo paints. So the ones I'm going to show here are going to be Vallejo. Um, this is model color number 70913, and it's yellow ochre. This is the one that I like to use first. And big surprise, I like to dry brush. So the first step that I'm going to do, and I wish I could show you this in real time, but the reality is these take a while to paint. So I just, 
I just don't have the time to, to, to record every little piece and splice it together. I'm not a videographer. I'm a customizer. I just try to shoot these things kind of real raw and quick. Hopefully they help you, even if you can't see me actually doing every step of the way. Um, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush this yellow ochre. And remember, when you're dry brushing, you put that in the actual paint tray, put your dip your, your brush in, dry your brush off on a paper towel so there's the faintest amount of paint on it. And then you start very, very lightly layering it all on. Let me show you a picture of what that looks like. So here's a picture of the skull dry brushed. And one of the things I want you to notice is around those horns there, um, there's areas of this sculpture that aren't meant to be the bone color that I got some of that dry brushing on. Dry brushing is not a very precise method um, because you're just kind of you know rubbing that brush on there to just get a little bit of paint on at a time and build it up. What's gonna happen is it's hard to not get the paint in places you don't want it. That's totally cool. At this stage, you're fine getting some paint. You can notice that I've got a little bit of paint on the inside of that eye socket there. That's not a problem at all paint on the base of those horns. That's okay. You're going to paint all of that with that dry brushing, even those chains. Those chains aren't going to end up being that color. It is okay. This is part of the process of painting is that you try to think about it in stages and you're always building up. There's going to be some stages where you get a little sloppy and you have to you know, roll it back and kind of fix those later as you're going to see. So that is going to be my step after it is fully black and spray painted. Now, the black that you see on the horns there, that's that spray paint color. That's that base coat. That's one of the nice things about using the black because some of this needs to be black anyway. By doing that base coat, it saves me having to brush all that on later. So that's my, my next step there. After I do that, after I'm really happy with the way that that color looks, that base color there, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to do kind of a wash on there, right? So this is something, it's admittedly a kind of scary part of the process for me because I love dry brushing. Dry brushing, you're putting on only a little bit of paint at a time. Really, really dry brush. It's very, very controlled in terms of the amount of paint going on. Um, doing like a paint wash is the exact opposite. And what I'm doing here is I'm watering down my paints. I've a number of times I've had people recommend watering down paints, and it's something I've started to do recently. I'm going to do another video about this in more detail, but for the purposes of this, let me show you what this looks like. This is that point, if you've ever watched, uh, you know, Bob Ross do paintings where everything's looking good, and then out of the blue, he just says, let's put a happy little tree right in the middle of the painting. And he just puts a big black mark and you're sitting there like, oh my God, Bob, what did you do? You just ruined that painting. But don't worry, Bob's going to bring it home. He's totally going to nail that, make that happy little tree that's smack dab in the middle of the painting. He's going to rock it. And by the end of that show, you're like, Bob knew what he was doing. I should have trusted Bob. Um, same thing here. What I do is I take some paint and let me just show you the paint that I'm using here. So that first one I used was the yellow ochre. The next one I'm gonna use, really any darker brown paint will work. The one I do is 984 and it's just flat brown. Real simple. Vallejo flat brown. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to put some of this in the paint tray just a little bit, and then I'm going to put some water. I really want it to be very watery, like the consistency of milk watery, okay? So not just slightly wet paint, like super, super wet paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to push that all over the part. And you can see here in this photo, you can literally see that wet paint. You can see how it's all pulled up around that chain area. Look around the jaw there. See how it's all super, super pulled up? This is the point where you start freaking out, where you start going like, I just totally ruined it. Look how bad that looks. Trust me, this is going to dry super cool. It dries messy, but that's what you're going for. It dries really, really thin and really, really messy. So it doesn't give you like consistent coverage. It gives you that kind of messy look. Now, remember, we're trying to match malleus here. So a good thing to do is 
if you look at that malleus figure, look at the way the paint is applied to that. You're going to see what I'm talking about, where it's not one flat total coverage. That darker brown color is kind of very, very spotty. And that's what we're going for here. So what we're going to do, once again, is we're going to paint. We're going to put the paint in our little you know, paint holder. We're gonna put a bunch of water in there so it's really, really watery. We're gonna dip our brush in there and then we're gonna brush that right on to our piece. It's gonna pool up. It's gonna look really, really messy. It's gonna be really, really scary. Put it down, step back, clean your brushes, go get yourself something to drink, chill out for a little while, let it dry. When you come back, you're gonna be amazed at the way that it looks, how it really gave that nice kind of multicolored, dirty look to it. So the next thing we're gonna do, let me bring up another photo here, as you see the step-by-step -step process. This is the next photo. So if you notice around those horns here, and if you notice inside that eye, this is the point where I've now got, and look, you can see that brown. This is the exact same piece that was taken after that really wet paint that I just showed you. This is a photo that was taken a few hours after it dried. And you can see that I don't have those big pools of paint that you saw in that first photo, but I've got this nice, really rich, organic looking, kind of you know, multi-tonal look to the paint. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is now, a lot of those areas that I was sloppy with, that I got some of that bone color, these, the yellow ochre and the, black, the brown, I got those paints on some of the parts like inside the eye socket on the horns. So now I'm gonna paint those black. So I'm taking a brush and you can see around those paints, it's, you can see the paint's actually wet in this photo because I, I put it right on and then took, took this shot. Um, that's what I'm doing, I'm getting those all back to that black color so only the part that is bone remains bone. The chains I'm leaving alone for now, I'll get to those, but I'm doing all of the black pieces first. This, this step is really gonna depend on the part that you're doing. Um, in this particular case, I had those bones that I had to do, I had to clean them up. Different parts, whether you're doing skulls or not, when you dry brush and you get some paint on pieces that aren't meant to have that dry brushed paint on them, there's going to be a step where you just bring them back to probably that black base color and just a little bit of little bit of brush brushing on that. Next step here, those horns, I added a little bit of a dark gray to. So you can see now those horns, they have so much texture to them. This is some more dry brushing. I'm just taking that little bit of dark gray, drying it off on the paper towel, really, really dry. And then I'm just dry brushing a little bit of that onto these horns. It really just brings out some of those sculptural details, makes it look really, really nice. There we go. And now the last step that I'm gonna do here, oh, I should mention one other thing. Let me bring that, that image back up there too. Another thing that I do at this stage is I did paint the teeth as well. So I wanted the teeth to have a slightly different color than the rest of the bone here. So what I did was I like this one, Vallejo 976. This one's called Buff. A um, Little bit of that on the teeth that just really kind of brings out those teeth as well. Not 100% not necessary, but I want to do that too. So the last step that I'm gonna show you here are those chains, obviously. Gotta get all those chains to be done. So there we go. They were, in the last photo I showed you, still that bone color. I just take a little bit of that silver and I just paint those chains. You can see he's got some little bit of chains around his jaw, on his head. And if I bring this back, um, the back of the sculpture actually has like some armor on the back of his head. That's actually what all these chains are supposedly connected to. So that's the last step that I'm doing is I'm just getting a little bit of, for that I use Craftsmart tin, but any silverish paint will work. 
and I'm just painting those final pieces just with a little brush, just getting that detail work in. That's the process, right? You get the raw sculpture, base it out with black spray paint, a little bit of dry brushing of that yellow ochre till it gets the color, the color I want. Then I get the darker brown, water down that paint, brush that over, hold my breath, right? You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to just glob it on there. It's just, you're going to see it just pool up like I had in that photo. Put some of that paint on there, let it dry, come back. I like to paint the teeth, do all that black area that I had to fix that I had done, done any kind of dry brushing overage, any other detail in this case, that little bit of uh, dark gray to bring out the, the horns and the, the, the sculpture details of the horns. And then finally for me doing those those chains now not every part is going to have all these pieces but in principle i've used this exact same process a couple different times so first things first let me show you the final custom and it's actually the one i've been holding in my hand there this is what the final custom came out like so after all that process you can see on the left i've got the photo of the full custom fully integrated onto you know the figure itself um and that just uses a shadow ecradron figure with some custom weapons and those the big you know uh, mythic legions wings that i painted to match um, but ultimately that's just on that body you can see a close-up detail of the finished head on the right side there and ironically the photos of this are the exact same head as the one that i've been holding up to the camera that's actually the one that's in my collection but i've used this exact same process with other figures as well so let me show you a couple other examples that follow this same process so here we've got two different sculptures on the left we've got the wendigo which is a really similar sculpture to the demon skull um, but it's 1.0 size just instead of those those four horns it's got those antlers um, and then over to the right we've got that orc skull head that was sculpted by Emil Wickman and printed by Wolf King Customs. Um, in both cases these are on a malleus body so what I wanted to do here was match the malleus and I really did the exact same process for the Wendigo it was exactly what I just mentioned with a slight variation because he's got antlers in here as opposed to chain and horns. So for that one, I still based it out in black spray paint. I did the dry brushing of the yellow ochre. I painted the teeth. I did the, you know, the, the, the darker brown that was really, really watered down. In that case, I also used that watered down brown paint to do the antlers as well. So I got both of them there. I did it on the skull to make that dirty look, and I did his antlers. Um, then, remember on the ogre, I went and I fixed all the overage on the horns. I made them black again. In this case, I did that with the hair. So I, any hair that had gotten some dry brushing on it, I make that all black, and then I use that same kind of dark gray that I did to accentuate the sculptural details of the horns on the demon skull. I did that with the hair on the Wendigo. For the skull, it's a little bit e even easier process. Black spray paint, that yellow ochre base, the, the brown watered down color on top of it. Then I painted the teeth with that buff color. And then if there was any overage I needed, like if, if I got any kind of uh, dry brushing inside the eye sockets, I put a little bit of black in there to finish it up. So that's even fewer steps than having to do, you know, the chains and stuff that I did on the demon. And this doesn't only have to be for heads as well. This last photo that I'll share is a new weapon that's going to be offered at Legion Shop from the Toy Forge. And this is a really cool kind of, uh, you know, crazy looking, I, I call it a spino sword. And you can see it's actually got bones integrated into the design of the handle and it kind of goes up to the blade. So that bone element of this weapon, I did exactly that same process that I just mentioned. Black base coat, yellow ochre, some really watered down brown, and then I dry brushed on that silver, not only for the blade, but I also dry brushed or, or put some silver on. There's these like three kind of metal, you know, almost like attachment pieces on the spine area as well.
it's ex the exact same process because really what I'm going for is just trying to achieve that bone colored look. Like I mentioned at the start, if I was putting this on a tibias figure, it would be a different process. That's a whole nother video we'll have to do how to match tibias. But this is one that I have found. This is a process that I have found works really, really well if you're trying to match malleus. So last time, you get your raw piece, whatever you're working with. I mean, and by the way, if you're working with another skull that's already painted and you want to match it to malleus, just start with that black coat of spray paint, right? If, if, that, if that's where you need to start, getting that black base coat, that's step number one. Base it out in black. Step number two, dry brush some yellow ochre on top of it. And again, different colors will work for you. These are just the colors that I use. Next step. I'm going to use my flat brown or any kind of darker brown color. I'm going to really, really water this down. While the yellow ochre was dry brushed, I'm really, really going to water this one down so it goes on and it dries nice and spotty and gives me that thin but really dirty looking coverage. Um, next, I'm going to paint some teeth. If I have teeth on it, anything that I want to look a little bit different, I'm going to try to find a slightly different color than what I'm working with. I really like using buff for that, Vallejo buff, painting the teeth of the character. Sometimes you can even paint this before you do the brown wash. If you want to get some of that brown wash on that teeth, you can actually add the painting the teeth step before the brown wash. That works really, really good as well. And then finally, just clean up any areas of the sculpture that you painted where you didn't want paint. In the case of this ogre skull, when I'm going to be painting on top of all of those bones that I want to clean up, if I'm doing the Wendigo here and I, you know, overpainted on the back of the head or something, I'm going to want to clean that up with some black paint, just with a brush just a little bit of black paint. So then I can do whatever final steps. In this case, I use that kind of dark gray to do the back of his hair. In this case, I use the dark gray to add some detail to the sculpture, sculptural details on those actual horns. Those are all things that you're gonna do and then you finish it up. That's it. That's how I paint these skulls. Every one of these that was sold on legionshop.com and every one that will be sold that I paint follows this exact method. So if you've watched this video and you're like, you know what, that looks awesome, but I don't, I don't think I want to do that, then you can buy yourself a painted version. If you buy yourself an unpainted version and you want to try to match the work I've done, hopefully this video will help you do that. If you enjoy videos like this, please let me know by giving the video a like. If you have any questions or comments, that is what the comment section on the video is for. And if you enjoy my channel, if you enjoy the content that I bring you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I cannot wait to see what you make.